So hello, welcome to Above the Law, the Ringscape Story Podcast. So I'm Maud Osborne, Senior Narrative Designer, and this week we're talking about the joy of Zaros, um, a topic that most of you have been calling for for weeks and weeks, and I've just been blissfully ignoring, but now we're going to do it. Um, so we're going to talk about what makes him interesting to so many, and you can expect a clearer idea of what he was like during the Second Age, and possibly what you can expect from him in the future. So to join me, we've got a gaggle. Uh, we've got uh, Maud Jack. Um, hello. Hiya. Um, he's been kind of, you've been kind of Zaros's biographer in recent weeks, haven't you? You've been kind of... Yeah, for the second age, yeah. Yeah, just kind of determining a bit more information, because we've got some gaps there, which is kind of how the Empty Lord works, I guess. Um, also been working on a Zaros comic. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which I <laughs> forgot to bring with me, actually. Yeah, I, it's, it's okay. It's probably not so great it. on a podcast, yeah. No, it doesn't really. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not so great in real life, I think. <laughs> uh, we've got more Timbo, who thinks that butterflies are cool, as we found out in the pre preamble. How you doing? Hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. And we've got uh, Mozera. Hello. Hi. Um, who sell it bang spiders, now realised. <laughs> um, you're also kind of a Zerosian, aren't you? We'll go into yes. that in more detail, but uh, yeah. And we've got more John A. I don't have any um, bug-related information about you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But you're, you wrote the Zaros God Emissaries yes, book, is that right? Yeah, OK. So to get stuck in straight away, because I've got more questions than we could possibly do in a podcast, I think. Mm. Um, so how would you all, this is to the group, just um, how would you describe Zaros? What does he represent, do you think? God, who's going to start? What, Jack, how would you describe Zaros? Zaros is not human. <laughs> That's it's a, more a so. Point. I mean, many, many, as we, you know, we know well, one of the gods is human. Yeah. Or was human. Yeah. We know that some of the other gods weren't human, but they were fundamentally that kind of mortal. Human. They have they philosophies. Have mortal yeah. philosophies. They, they, they care about mortal things. So are you saying that he's immortal? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, obviously he's God, but um, yeah, okay, it's okay. More so, more so than different. the other gods, he's different. He's yeah. different. Mm -hmm. So he's got a different thinking thought process, which means he does things differently from the other gods. Yeah. And that's what probably explains a lot of what's happened in the sixth age, second age. Sorry. Um, anybody else want to go further than that? Because obviously there's a sense of mystery about Zaros. It's probably worth it. Yeah, I, I just think he's sort of bigger than than us, like bigger than the other gods. So he's sort of like this sort of a massive sort of entity that we yeah. don't really understand. Do you mean physically bigger? Is it kind of not not necessarily physically but sort of mentally or yeah. um sort of historically bigger than everything else. Right. And um And he's left that kind of vacuum, isn't he? Yeah. Like being here. I've always found that quite interesting. Ironically leaving a sort of big empty space. Yeah. Um and um just sort of knowing about this empire and things. Yeah. Um but yeah and he sort of represents just represents that sort of beyond sort of mortality. Yeah. So sort of the fate of thing. Yeah, often that, that um, you, you said fate. I mean, sometimes we kind of dither between what he represents. He's been various different things. We've got control, mm. we've got fate. Um, some people that I've said are kind of like power sometimes. I mean, I mean, what do you see? Do you see him representing those things? Is it I, important I, if he represents single words? You know? I don't think it's helpful to say this god represents this single word concept in some absolute sense. Yeah, yeah I, I think that. I think that it's we end up with lazy characterization where mortal characters we can have pull pub across a backstory but with a god somehow you've got to sum it up with one word uh we've we've said god of control sometimes we've said god of fate um i think you could you could say god of order all that kind of taken by some of in yeah but, um so he, this fate is just a different form of order i suppose possibly yeah. but all fate ties into control for me so yeah. he wants to be in charge he wants to um he wants to maybe have everything in its place. Yeah. He wants to be authoritarian. Um, yeah. I, I, I've always liked that he's cornered purple as a colour. I think that's quite a fabulous <laughs> colour and I think... It is a good colour. <laughs> um, okay. Do you consider him to be evil? Because that's, you know, often a... That's something that's also pitched at Zamorak, to be fair. So would you consider him evil? Go on, Zerosian, or Sarah, what would you say? I think there's probably an underlining tone of evilness to him, but I wouldn't say overall he's evil. In what way would you say he's evil? Is he kind of, you know... In a, Manipulative sense. Yeah. Um, take the Dragon Riders, for example. Yeah. He promised them things and then put off giving it to them. Yeah. It'd be interesting so, to know whether or not that was deliberate. Yeah. You never have all the answers for him, so you never quite know whether he is truly evil or whether he had yeah. a plan or a purpose for not giving them what they yeah. were after. And that's part of being that kind of instrument. Yeah, it's you can't the kind tell. of mystery about him that's. Yeah. Um, so when we released, so I think it was with the World Weights, we released kind of God robes to be, to be bought on our store, just like the vast proportion of them was ours. So there's obviously, he connects with players. Um, do you have any idea why there's that connection, do you think? 
I think it's because he's mysterious. Yeah. Um, and because um, it's not the case so much more, but it used to be the case that in order to know about him at all, you had to complete certain quests. So you didn't... He wasn't, like... One of the first few gods you find out about. You, you first you find out about Savadome and uh, Zamorak Gothix. Then, if you do dig site quest, you now hear of Zavos, who is this new um, kind of non uh, he's, he's ancient. He's not around anymore. So there's that mystique of an ancient lost civilization. Um, yeah. You get to feel like you're part of an exclusive club for knowing about him at all. Yeah. Um, and because there's so little was known about him, you could project onto him what you thought a mysterious god ought to be like. Yeah. So is there a sense of, do you see him like the raptor? Because obviously you created the raptor. Is there I, something similar that you There is something into? similar with the raptor in that uh, his appeal is from being mysterious, yeah. not from you know about him when he's awesome. It's you don't know about him, so you can project onto him or you can speculate yeah. about him. So, well, Jack, you've been working a lot on him. I mean, I've seen you getting really enthusiastic about Zaros. Is there a reason why he's Zaros out of all of the gods? Because because there is an unanswered mystery to answer. Yeah. I mean, in the case of some of the other gods, there, so as their motivations are clearer. With Zaros, we know we know nothing canonically about his motivations. So there's yeah. there's a wide open book, but also a big target. You know, a lot of expectation to yeah. try to fill. So it's quite an exciting. So it's like prospect of, that anticipation. of trying to come up with something that is as interesting as people yeah. would expect it to be. So you just saw that emptiness there as yeah. something that you could fill and really kind of create something interesting. Yeah, um, which kind of keys in nicely to whether or not you consider yourselves to be Zerosians, because I obviously chose you because you've already worked mm -hmm. on it, or, or I've got real interest in Zeros. So where, where, where do you see yourself with Zeros? <laughs> Go on, Martin Bay. Yeah, I, I'm definitely a Zerosian. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I fell in love with the reasons that um, everyone else has sort of given, uh, including just the fact that he had this vast empire across Gilinor. It's so big and so unimaginable what we have in current day mm. um, it spread so far from like yeah. Fothingry to the desert to I mean there's talk about like Sentistan being as big as from the dig site all the way to Edgeville and that's just that's my exactly, me. I don't know yeah. if that's actually true <laughs> but it's in game but that, that's massive but such so no I think I think we didn't we agree that it definitely wasn't going to be that big no it would be kind of chorus and big wouldn't it Sentistan yeah. was sort of the area of the dig site yeah yeah and there but there were other Zerotian settlements well talking about how big Edgeville. it is you get problems with how scary yeah, exactly, in actual yeah. miles would that be in, yeah. in the yeah. Yeah. real world. Yeah, exactly. So we're, we're assuming that the dig site is a lot further from Edgeville in, in the sort of real Gillenor than it is on the RuneScape map where yeah. they're about, what, three minutes well, apart or something. <laughs> Gillenor would have a population of about, you know, 2,000 or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, you've got thoughts on this because you're not a Zerosian, are you, my Jack? You're... Well, I am a Zerosian, but not in the same sense that a player means, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I I was listening to um, a player made podcast, the Seercast, and they were they they were talking about things I'd said, and they said, and of course, and of course, Mod Jack, he he knows all about what Zaros is really like, and he's still a fan of him. So you know, obviously, Zaros <laughs> must be pretty awesome. <laughs> but for me, and I, I assume, John, you said same yeah. sort of thing. But we're we're evaluating them as as characters to write for. Yeah. So I'm a fan of Zaros as a writer, and mm -hmm. I'm a fan of Saradomin as a writer. Saradomin's a really interesting character, particularly he's got a lot of you know, uh, com complexity added to him as a character. There's a lot to do with it, and so so I'm not seeing Zaros as as a sort of perfect deity to worship, but as an interesting character to work with. And that means for him to be an interesting character, he's got to be flawed. He's got to have complex motivations. Yeah. He's got to have some things that he does that are good, and some things that he does that are bad. Um, none of which are particularly good characteristics for someone to abjectly and unquestioningly worship. Yeah. So. In it's that the, sense, no. It's the same with me, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say I am um, am a anything Ian. I'm not a Zavosian, I'm not a Savadomanist. I'm not Just a, an Ian. Um, but is, is it, yeah, so it's the same with Bandos, because you created Bandos, effectively. I created Bandos, well, I created Bandos as a villain. Yeah. He's... Um, of course, that might and, have to change a wee bit. Well, maybe, well, I, maybe. I, I, well, I'm personally very resistant to making him not a villain anymore. I think... Yeah it's possible to make him interesting without making him sympathetic. Yeah. I'd want to I'd want to go into his backstory in a way that explains him more, but not making everything seem all right, because yeah. no, he's evil. There's well, any god who's... Well, enough, I think, for the god canon, I think there has to be some that have evil... You know, people do want to role-play, and they're evil, yeah, yeah. as evil characters, you get all these kind of... Um, it's a nice effect, for example. So, yeah, I, what I would say is... Worshipping Bandos is explicitly the evil option. Right. Um, more so than Zamorak or more so than Zamorak. Zamorak, 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 even if you think he's evil, he's like he's like Satan in Paradise Lost. He's a noble demon. Yeah. Um, 
Dandos is he's just a terrible person. Dog. He's he's, he's <laughs> um uh yeah he's 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 not just evil, he's not even polite about yeah, it. Yeah, he's a very self-knowing bully, isn't he? He's um, and so I think... Yeah, but um, back onto Zavos, whether he's evil or not is... Um, I'd want to know more about him before I made that call. Yeah. I don't think it's helpful to start by saying this god is evil or not evil. Yeah. I think it's better to... Um, to have them do stuff and, have, and reveal stuff about them and then let players make the call of whether they consider them yeah. evil. Oh, that's... Yeah, yeah that's, defi- that's definitely what we're going for with Tamarack and Teradome and Anzaros, mm, yeah. I think. Yeah. Here, here, is, here is a complex tale of the things that they've done yeah. and, to some extent, their explanation of why they did it. What do you think? Yeah. Do you think they're good or do you think they're evil? And just we're because not you. Um, one god is evil doesn't mean the god fighting against them is also... It has to be not evil. They could yeah. both be evil. You could, you could well think that all the gods and most of the gods are evil, depending on your, yeah. what you think evil is. So, Sarah, would you consider yourself Zaros Fangirl? I or am. is it go deeper than that? No, I've, I've always been Zarosian. and I think it's, like what Timbo said, it, it's the lost empire and how vast it was and the air of mystery around in what little we know yeah. never fully answers anything. Yeah. And it's that mystery that intrigues me. Okay. And hopefully we won't reveal all of the mystery in this one <laughs> podcast. We'll see. Um, we're, doing, we're doing pretty well. Yeah, so I think so, but we're, we're vaguing it up <laughs> quite hard. <laughs> right, let's drill down. Let's do it. Um, so you talked a little bit about maybe the origin of Zaros and maybe how he's different. I mean, could we go talk more about um, Zaros' origins? Well, we can say... We can his say origin story? His origin is very different to almost all the other gods. Yeah. Hmm. I think necessarily so, because we wanted to make him distinct. We felt there needed to be that he was, had that importance. Yeah. There was something different about how he acted. Um, and that is, I think it's safe to say, is going to be a focus of one of our upcoming pieces of story. We, I think we can commit to he wasn't a mortal who hung around with a load of elder artefacts yeah. and as a consequence became a god. Yeah. Yes. So we can say that. Yes. Yeah. That's not go. the case. He never ascended. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, so if we go chronologically through Zaros' history, let's start picking things out. Here we go, Lord Hounds. Um, why did Zaros build an empire if he wanted to rule from the shadows? There seems to be kind of a conflict there. There's somebody who wants to be empty, as it were. He didn't. He didn't. I think in the Second Age, want to rule from the shadows. That's uh, that's something he's learned. Yeah. And and he learned it over the course of the Empire. I think that that early on, during the initial invasion, he was he was present and around and seen a lot more. Mm. And then gradually he withdrew, leaving them to get on with things for themselves. Yeah. Exactly why he did that. Not decided on yet. Yeah. Not absolutely decided on. It's not easy to rule um, a huge empire like that on your own. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I think an empire was the kind of thing you can rule from the shadows. If it, yeah. you can build empire instit- pyramid scheme. Well, you can build institutions that become self-sustaining, um, and it becomes stable enough that Zavos himself barely needs to intervene anymore. Yeah, it just mm. it, the, I, I think I, that was his yeah. intention. That was definitely his intention. Yeah. And yeah. then any interactions he had would be invisible. Yes, um, but his method of achieving that perhaps wasn't. Quite, didn't quite work for him. Obviously, as he got, you know, fell on and stabbed. No, um, but but that, that <laughs> I guess that's that. his. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Sorry, that's <laughs> trivialising it a bit. <laughs> Turbulence. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but did Zaros know about the plot to overthrow him? A lot of questions on the forums were about this because, of course, it kind of again. We've we've discussed this. We've discussed this in detail. I think we we prefer the answer no. I think. Yeah. To yes, he did, and it was all his idea. Yeah. That this was all part of his because plan. That, he hoped that this would happen, then that. this would happen, then this would happen. Zaros, Zaros has responsibility for a lot of things, and to give him responsibility for everything Zamorak did as well yeah. just seems to be doing Zamorak a disservice. I think Zamorak has to be able to make his own decisions. And, yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah. It's all belittles Zamorak's story as well. Yeah. 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 It's all belittles yeah, yeah, story. Yeah. Of yeah. Saying that Zaros planned all this, and yeah. just a pawn. You can see how it could happen, because yeah. he was, he, Zaros was retreating more and more into this kind of, uh, just a small clique of generals, you know, it might have been that just Samarak talked to him, maybe as Nadra as well, maybe um, Char or, or Nex perhaps, and, and, and slowly, you know, he, those were the only people he trusted, and he thought that he was reducing the, the circle of trust, but really he was keeping one very um, betrayable person, that's not a word. It's possible he became too reliant on the running of his empire, and or, or on the empire running the way he'd planned, and so things happening off the grid, as it were, yeah. became invisible to him. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah he, he's definitely the kind of person who would have just assumed everything was going to plan. Yeah, we certainly don't want to be omniscient in any way. No, no. no. Okay, um, so what really happened when he was betrayed? Now, this is something that I've got real kind of personal investment in because obviously this was this has been a rough rage, this story. I think it was back to the kind of um, Shadow Sword. How Zaros was betrayed? Was that the content? I think, General Shadow? I think Curse, so. Curse of Zaros. And yeah. I think there was yeah. a fairly general idea before that, and then that added the first details. Yes. Yeah. So this is obviously something that's been around for a while. and it, I, I, For me, it's not something... I don't think it's very elegant plotting. I don't think it's very elegant. It's something that I would like to clear up and maybe give it more kind of gravitas, more um, uh, importance, more interest, um, was how he got betrayed. So how do you imagine that happened, do you think? Um, do you think that, for example, Zamorak fell on Zaros and there was a, a staff kind of conduit between them, passing the power from one to the other? Uh, I think I think it's the I think it's the accidentally tripping, which is yeah. the bit that we all have a problem with. Yeah. Um, that that Zamorak stabbed Zaros with the staff of Armadale, yeah. and as a consequence became a god. I think is the bit that we consider to be absolutely canonical. Yeah. Yeah. The exact detail of how that happened, how Zamorak was able to beat this deity. Yeah. And I mean, that's the topic that's, of your comic. That's the topic of the comic, yeah. yeah. Which, but we're still sorting out the details of yeah. that, yeah. Because we'd really like to get that out, because basically it's going to be very hard for us to see that moment mm. or talk about that moment um, and show it to the... I should, I should clarify, it's not... This, when this we're talking about a comic, this is something I've sketched out. This is not, <laughs> this is not an official RuneScape product. Yeah, and indeed. it may never be in the form of a comic, because yes, that's incredibly yeah, expensive. Yeah, I mean, even the motion comic took up so many resources. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a dream that we do. and Maybe, maybe we just act it out at RuneFest or something. Yeah. We'll find a little corner and get some players around. Yeah, I'll go for that. Yeah. Are you willing to participate, are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll put you in a child wig. <laughs> I, want a, I want as an address hat. Oh, okay, okay. We'll get you a rabbit hat. Yeah, yeah, I need to make one of those as well. Yeah. <laughs> we, should all, we should all wear them. Oh, right, why, Rune Fest? Yeah, as an address hat. Yeah. I should clarify, I mean as an address crown headdress thing. Not the Dr. Nabonik. Not the Dr. Nabonik hat. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? Still cool. There's nothing wrong with it. Like it's just it. not as an address hat. Uh, that's better can swap them. Yeah. <laughs> Night Nightwear and daywear. And you can tell you get a skeletal mask as well. <laughs> now imagine Zaros in a nighty getting ready for bed. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think oh. what we can commit to is that Vigora's report of what happened is oh, not yeah. entirely reliable. Yeah, that is also he true. was mistaken about some things, um, partly because he didn't really understand what he was seeing. I mean, this was yeah. a this was a this was a fight that was full of the most powerful magical beings that have ever walked the. Gilead. He's also a betrayer. He yeah. didn't see Zaros in a particularly great light because he never Zaros didn't look on humans or there is a report that maybe he, he didn't look on humans particularly well yeah we, um, yeah, we know that Vigora specifically or... betrayed Zaros because he didn't like the way Zaros was doing yeah, things yeah exactly um, okay um, can we talk more about the relationship his relationship with the demons because that's something I know that we've actually kind of documented a bit more sorry this is very much to what Jack yes I've been well I've been writing I've been writing a bit about this um, mm. to do with Z why Zaros visited well, so we, we, we've clarified that the Infernal Dimensions and Pandone, Pandemonium are the same thing. Yep. Um, it's a world, it's the world that demons come from. Yeah. Demons are the people that come from Pand yeah. Pandemonium, that's what they are. And so Calgarian so, demons would also be from there? They're, that's they're, all they're, they're originally from yeah. there, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, but not, not everything in-game that's referred to as a demon is necessarily from Pandemonium, because of course humans can't just automatically tell where something comes from. So a summoned magical creature might yeah. be from a different world, it might not actually be a demon. But yeah. Most of what we call demons are from yeah, Pandemonium. True. Um, and so so we, we, we have a story now for, for Zaros' visiting Pandemonium, why he was there in the first place, how he interacted with the demons, yeah. why he recruited an army of demons. Yeah, because there is a mention of a demon pact in-game. Yeah. So the notion of a pact with the yeah. demons, flipping the traditional demon pact And this story. is this is to do with their culture and the way that they, the way that they interact with each other. They have a yeah. very uh, ordered... Uh, yeah. legalistic contract-based culture and Zaros manipulated that in order to yeah. take control of them because he needed an army to invade Gilanor. This, yeah. this was his entire motivation Man, behind to this story. Yeah, <laughs> to, to, to actually kind of reveal it and go there perhaps. You're also determining, you know, are imps younger versions of demons, yes, yes. implings, how oh, yes, they yeah, play well, into we, we decided, yes, there was a very convincing player argument that imps cannot be yeah. larval demons. And so, which is, yeah, yeah, which is what we, we've got We agree with that, yeah. yeah. Um, can we talk about more? Talk about more? Yeah, can we talk about more? Um, the relationship with the Dragon Riders, are they still alive? Someone, sorry, you kind of did, <laughs> did, did, did a lot of work kind of curating yes. that, game testing that yeah. story. Um, I mean, what's your feeling? We I did have a, a feeling that maybe <laughs> there's a possibility at least one is still alive. Yeah. We haven't Do you consider that to be Hannibus, or do you consider that to be the, the Dragon Riders from the homeworld? 
I'm just interested. I don't in know. Your... I I believe there is at least one that Zaros brought back with him. Yeah. That is still alive. Okay. In some form. Yeah. I mean, we we actually got some got some concept art on the go for it just because you know we yeah. wanted to see what it looked like because <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's that's why we do concept art <laughs> oh anyway um so what has zaros so zaros has obviously left the world after his betrayal uh, or perhaps left his world we could talk about that but what has he been doing since then do you think or do we know i think we we so i've been i've been working with another mod who's been he's been thinking about what zaros is doing in the sixth age yeah and what we agreed together was that for a very long period of time after the end of the second age he wasn't he, he was disc discorporated he yeah wasn't, he was gassy he he wasn't able to think he wasn't able to do anything yeah. and it took him a very long time perhaps thousands of years to put himself back together mm -hmm. so it's not like he's been consciously going around doing things yeah the entire time he's been away but i, I mean it's safe to say i think that he has still has eyes on Gilinor? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so there's no, he's not, yeah. hasn't got the intention to Gilinor, about Gilinor is very important to Zaros. Yeah, for, for reasons that will be his own reasons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's been trapped in Azanadra as well. Yes, of yes. course. So we've got the Temple of Sentestin kind of um, tin cups with the string. Yeah. Kind of communication. Sharing gossip. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's sort of you, you, have an, you have a thought on that, don't you? I remember you saying that, you know, maybe there'll be some heavy breathing between them. <laughs> We're not sure if that's true. That's not know. canonical. No. No, no, indeed. Um, and where is Zaros right now? I suppose we kind of answered that. Is it? Uh, is it somewhere we know about? Should, should we just I say yes? I don't, I don't think we can say <laughs> that. Should we say it's, yeah. it's, it's somewhere we've we've we 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 let players know about. We've heard of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's as deep as that yeah. team goes. That's all we're giving. <laughs> um, oh, wait, can we we can say he's not he's not returned. He's not right? returned. No. Certainly he's not, not yet. He's not no. Gillen or no. Because we know we know Zaros can hang around in the Shadow Realm if he wants. Yeah. But he isn't doing that. He's not on Gilinor in the Shadow Yeah, I, I think you could safely say that there are, there will be two versions. So there'll be some players in the world who won't have Zaros back in the world, and there will be some players who will have Zaros back in the world when we get to tell a story, because they'll have done that quest. Yeah. So there'll be a yeah. quest that brings Zaros back. Um, yeah. Um, where would he sit on the God hierarchy? So back to that. I'm, I'm now going to reveal the God <laughs> hierarchy at Reenfest, which will be available to everybody. You will be able to live stream that. So that will be shown. Um, we're going to do a little law feature, um, but where would you see Zaros fitting on the God hierarchy? I think, well, Timber, you've done a lot with the. Are you going to draw a picture like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs? <laughs> I was going to go for <laughs> a, a kind of um, Billboard Top 100 style, you know, or um, Top 40, just kind of oh, yeah. in seven, and then kind of yeah. do it that way. Um, I might put on a glittery jacket. It sounds fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> pop pickers. Um, yeah. So where would you see him sitting? So he sort of sits between. He sort of sits comparatively to Gothics. Yeah. Sort of two, tier yeah. two, tier so three. So tier one we've got as elder gods. Elder gods, yeah. And there are definite kind of things that an elder god can do. We've actually determined power sets yeah. for each of the higher up tiers. So that the elder gods, for example, can create life and create planets. Yeah, exactly. that's the only one we've revealed at the moment, but we'll reveal more. Yes. But you see him as two. As, as two, yeah. He's he's certainly very much more powerful than the ascended young gods. Yeah. Would you see that having changed since the betrayal? He's certainly not at full power. Yeah. Um, but that's still, I'm, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell where he is right now. Yeah. Um, but he, he's kind of still holding on with fingertips on to tier two, yeah. even as incorporeal yeah. or whatever you want I'd, to I'd, I'd say so, yeah. Yeah. We, I think we we agreed that that when Zamorak well, sucked all his power out with the Staff of Armadillo, he was, he was draining Zaros' power, and yeah. Zaros became far less powerful as yeah. a result. And, and Zamorak gained enough power, based on top of all of the Majorak kind of power, yeah. mm. just after a... a um, Ritual, etc. To catapult himself into godhood, but that still gave him some way to go, which his exposure to artifacts also helped with. Yeah, um, and yeah. so and then the reason that Guthix was substantially more powerful than Zamorak was because of very long exposure to elder yeah, artifacts. Yeah, to a number of elder artifacts in which he was largely alone. Um, yeah. on Gilinor with, and of course that's what all the gods were trying to duplicate during the God Wars. Yes, and why they were fighting so yeah. much was to yeah. try and get hold of all the. Was Guthics. effectively to be a Guthix, yeah. to be yeah, to be uh, have this world to themselves with all of. Whereas the Zaros. Zaros was never exposed to Elder Artifacts, yeah. really. There's in, a pure in, in sense, sense of his power, um, which we'll get into. But So he definitely did lose power, but he has been... He has a, he has a source of power. He's been regaining power. Yeah. 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 What do you think Zaros looks like? Anyone? Purple? <laughs> Purple. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just emptiness. Do you see? Mm. I mean, do you, do you worry that as soon as we start attributing some kind of physical oh, characteristics, I know this one. it I know diminishes this one. him a bit? It looks like a flying hoodie. 
Frying the pudding. <laughs> yes. He wouldn't be allowed in some shops where I live. I was reliably informed of this. In the, in the, in the Ocean comic, he looks like a flying pudding. <laughs> what did we get? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. He doesn't actually look so well. Yeah, we, so we've got some concept art for him, right? Well, I mean, he doesn't look anything like he no, does. No, no. I mean, Origins of Gillen will show some basically. It's a Nazgul from mm. Lord yes. of the Rings, doesn't it? Yeah. Which yeah. you know even does a little kind of squee. Oh, well, not a squee, but yeah. So um, we've gone away from that. There is more to mm. it than that. It's. I, I mean, he's still got that sort of elder sort of lish like. Yeah. So lich we say nowadays. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. That's <laughs> it. There's still an, an emptiness there. Yeah. Maybe very crystalline. Yeah, maybe shadowy. A bit crystally. Yeah. You'll find out more. We've actually been doing, I think, um, I don't think it's revealing too much to say, we've done actually three concept pieces of concept art for Zaros, actually, um, because there's the one that you see in the second age, which you may never get to see, but it's <laughs> nice to have. Um, but one, you know, kind of diminished, uh, corpor uh, so um, incorporeal, you know, what happened immediately after the betrayal, yeah. that kind of look. And, you know, because the second age might be him in clothes, we decided to see what he was like underneath the clothes in a kind of Ken Barbie. <laughs> <boy -ing. laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Looking up the skirt. Um, yeah, so that was useful. That's really interesting to see. I'm really, eventually we'll get to show you it. Um, is he different now from when he left Gillenor? So obviously, physically very different. But do you think he's kind of changed through his philosophy, how he works? I think he's, he's learned. Mm. Yeah, the betrayal in particular taught him a lot. Yeah, but the fall of the empire and the way the gods behaved, and who he trusts. Yeah, yeah. So, do you think his overall goal has changed? I or think it's just this way so of achieving it. That his, the empire was never his goal. Yeah, the empire was a means to accomplish something. What yeah. he's trying to accomplish hasn't changed, mm. but he doesn't necessarily believe that that the way that he was going about it is still the right way to yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, which isn't which isn't to say at all that he's sort of gone. Oh, the empire that was kind of mean. I should probably be nicer. <laughs> not, not at all. <laughs> he's going to go kind of Gandalf the White. He's going to arrive in a bla <laughs> blaze of glory, <laughs> white chariot. Sarah's the purple. Oh, Gandalf the White was the mean one. Yeah, Gandalf, oh, he, Gandalf oh, the Grey yeah. was all chummy and friendly and a bit grumpy. Yeah. Gandalf the White was like, I am a little bit self righteous. I'm very right? serious business. Zaros <laughs> yeah. um, is always serious business. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? So, I'm trying to word this question. What's his connection with Sliskane? Do you think that they are working with each other? Go on, Sarah. What do you think? I think Zaros definitely has things he wants Silisk to do, but I don't see Silisk as being somebody that's going to <laughs> necessarily, necessarily follow to <laughs> those orders yeah, to the letter. I, think that's a good I see him as it. having sort of a, a sneaky. Yeah his own way of want, wanting to slip something in yeah. for himself. I can say some people have got a little bit fed up of the way, are they, aren't they? So that we are going to give an answer, a definitive yes. answer in an upcoming piece of content. Is this like content. Ross and Rachel? Yeah. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, they won't they? <laughs> um, so if you are worried about, you know, the stories of whether or not Sliska is a god or if Sliska is with Saros or not, then that is actually going to be given an answer relatively soon. Um, do you think that Saros would start another empire if he were to come back? Only, so only, only if it only if it fit his goals. Yeah, it's not as I said. It's not it's not his intrinsic motivation. He's not he's not all about empires. Mm. Yeah, um, it happened to be the thing that that he thought would would accomplish his goals. Yeah, and if it if it turns out to be again, then absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and do you yeah. think he conquer the whole world again in moments? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> so everybody could see it. He'll have, have to go get a new army first. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, do you think he wanted Guthix dead? Because obviously th there's. The Zerosians on the Azanadra side who wanted to wake him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there were Zerosians on the Siliske side who wanted to kill him, obviously, because they mm. did. Spoiler. Um, so what is the true Zaros there? I don't think Zaros minds that he's dead, but I think he would have preferred him to stay alive. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it's such a powerful being who's been exposed to so much elder artifact and elder energy. Um, he's almost, he's like the closest to an equal to to Zaros in terms of power. Um, so I'd say he'd definitely like to keep him alive. Yeah. What he would do with Guthix while he was alive is a different matter, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Zaros has no enmity for Guthix. No, no, he no, no, certainly not. Would have had no... But I oh, now, what was it? We, we were discussing this. There's this interesting question of whether or not they knew about each other. Yeah. And I think we've now established that Guthix never knew anything about Zaros. He didn't know Zaros existed. Mm -hmm. But Zaros did know Guthix. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they never met and talked. 
Uh, yeah. But Zaros was well aware of Guthix and who he was and what he was yeah. doing. But he wasn't a threat or... He wasn't, yeah. he, the edicts, perhaps, were an inconvenience. Mm. Yeah. And would have been a bit of a nuisance. That's it, so there may have been a kind of means to an end sense with him. I mean, again, we'll go into that more detail in, in content. Um, but if he did come back, so there'd be a lot more what-ifs. I mean, what would, his be rea- what would his reaction be to other gods? I mean, the first one that pops into my mind is Zamrak. What do you think his reaction to Zamrak would be? Do you think he still has revenge on the mind? Is revenge something that Zaros is interested in? I think it's something he'd be able to put aside for the sake of a greater goal. Yeah. I think so he wouldn't he wouldn't rule out in principle forgiving Zamorak and working with him, but I don't think that's likely. Yeah. I, I, but it's important on the flip of that. I, I, I really can't see Zaros coming back and Zamorak being his first intention. It's not going to be no. some kind of revenge story no. by no. any means. Um, I, I think I wouldn't be surprised if Zaros almost saw Zamorak as beneath him in some sense. Yes. Mm. It, it, if Zamor- Zaros went after Zamorak, it wouldn't be because you hurt me, I want revenge. It's because I don't trust you, I want to stop you hurting me again. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, yeah, I'm not sure Zaros understands the concept of revenge. I don't think, mm. I don't think that yeah, makes sense. I agree to with him. that. Yeah. He, Zam- Zamorak is either a danger or not a danger, and he's either useful or not yeah. useful. Well, there's, there's no, not much utility to revenge, is there? There's yeah, no exactly, problem. yeah. It's, it's, it's not going to help him accomplish his goals. Yeah. E- except, as John says, through Zamorak being an obstacle to yeah. those goals. Being, and if, there, if there is any empty, it's much more likely to be on Zamorak's yeah. part. Do you think yeah. he's got any feeling towards any of the other gods? That, uh, any of the old current pantheon? I wouldn't thought so. I wouldn't say so. No. Yeah. I think there's one in particular that... Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that at all. But we got to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> There, there's one that he'd high five, I'm sure. But um, yeah, if he's not an ascended mortal, if he's came into it some other way, then he may not have feelings in human in human sense at all. Yeah, mm. it, it, it's in the truest sense, a kind of alien. I mean, he, he yeah, is an alien. Absolutely. In that yeah. sense. Um, okay. And um, what are his plans for the player? Because he, he obviously thinks we're special. We form part of Asnadra's plans for bringing back Zaros. Um, Solisco thinks we're important. A lot of Zaros revolves around us. So why do you think Zaros focuses on us as players? The adventurer. Because we've talked about this, haven't we? We say, I mean, the player is the guardian of Guthix. Yeah. Mm. A world guardian. Um, and there's an element of that that is vital to Zaros, mm. which yeah. I don't think, um, which kind of purely functionally, practically, there's also a sense, um, I've always seen it, that the player seems to be at the, s- the centre of this weird interrelatedness, interconnectedness of mm. all these stories, everything. They're the focus of a lot of things. And for somebody like Zaros, who's a big, a big fate fan, um, that would be interesting to him. He'd, un- he'd be interested to know why you're at the centre of everything, mm. what that means. Yeah. I've always um, thought the player stood out of, and sort of like, he's like a, is, is apart from the rest of the human race, yeah. you know, apart from a lot of other more races on Gilinor. Mm. So sort of Zaros has sort of taken note, mm. or maybe not necessarily Zaros himself, but his followers are sort of... And Zar- Zaros definitely appreciates unique, interesting, yeah, powerful, exactly. and useful people. Sure. Um, he's not completely oblivious to the difference between mortals. Yeah. And I think you'd be aware that you would could betray him as well now. So yeah. Mm. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. So we're on to the quick fire question roulette. So we're gonna try to rattle through these. Uh, it never happens, obviously. It gets uh, <laughs> it's quite slow sometimes. Um but if you've got any questions um for to be asked in these quick fire question roulettes, please but do put them on the future game updates forum. That's a, a thread dedicated to that. Or to ask me them on Twitter. So that's Jagex Hosborn. So just to go through those quickly, uh, what was life like for a peasant living in Zaros' empire? That's from Dinstruction. It was bad. <laughs> well, really? Yeah. I would have thought it would be pretty good compared with being a peasant living in some other time. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know how to answer the question by comparison to what was it like living in the Saradominus provinces, for example. The human peasant, I mean, did he look down on humans? Is it, is it the human problem? Is it a human problem or is it just being underneath Zaros? I think there like? probably weren't any non-human peasants. Uh, true. The demons, the demons and the vampires. And so, so the the entire demon and vampire and Majorat populations were supported by the human. Presence. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. there weren't enough demons and vampires in Majorat to to really form a, an empire. They mm-hmm. were the powerful people in the empire. Okay. Uh, next question: Why didn't Vigora appreciate what Nex was doing for the human race? That's from Noctesius. So we we. I, think I didn't. I didn't research this. Damn it! No, it was, we, we, we thought that they were from different time frames, yes. didn't we? Because we've got a sense that Nex is Nex is Nex is third age. Is Nex actually third age. I think it's around very much. In the yeah, age. I'm not sure that this is player known. We're still we're still researching this to make sure it's consistent. Yeah, um, but yeah. I think our Graf intention feeling. is that that Nex wasn't really around very much in the second age. She wasn't a, an established 
character in the Empire yeah. that everyone There was knew something of. that happened in the Third Age, which obviously is quite interesting because Zaros isn't necessarily present from Gernor yeah. in the Third Age, um, that, makes, you know, that makes her an entity for the Third Age. Um, okay. we, need, we need to check because we have those we have those stories about Nex interacting yeah. with the, the the people that drop the, the people that the armor is named after. Yes, that's and it. that yeah. I think those stories are not dated specifically to either yeah. the second or the third. So this is a little kind of window so in how we do that. the lore. It, it just kind of we've got ideas for what we want to do for certain characters, but kind of making them fit together. We want to make sure we don't contradict anything. Yeah. Um, who would win in a fight, as an Azure or Nex? That's from where he's tell. Fantastic question. <laughs> So go on, fam. Please go on. Go on, go on, go on. As an Edra. Next. <laughs> I think it depends. I don't know. Because doesn't some of the laws state that the longer Nex battled, the more powerful she got, mm. which was the problem to begin with. So it depends at what point as That's an Edra is fighting. Obviously, obviously Nex would go and have a few rounds with uh, the other Madra at first, and then come around to. Plus, Madra surely it would depend how long it's been since they last had their their um, ritual yeah. for true. regeneration. That's true. Um, I wouldn't see Azanadra surviving the battle with Nex. No. <laughs> <laughs> even, even if he won. Oh, how convenient. <laughs> so they, they both lose. Is what well, you're no, but I, I, I think Azanadra would defeat Nex, but it couldn't survive yeah. afterwards. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't think they would fight. I, well, I really of course, they wouldn't fight. I really want to know what Janae thinks. <laughs> I, I think that... Well, it's whoever the writer wants to win. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kind of find the... I think that who would win in the fight, this being or that being, is a boring question. I'd rather <laughs> think about what the fight means to them or why the fight is happening. Well, yeah. that, that makes the next question almost more important. Who would win in a fight, you or more Jack? <laughs> <laughs> Me. Me, clearly. <laughs> yeah, because I don't pull any punches. Oh, right Probably. Oh, damn <laughs> um, are there any vampires that follow Zaros? That's from Denarak 33. Uh, certainly, certainly during, during the Second Age, yes. They didn't all turn to Zamorak. Mm. So there would have been fighting between vampires in the yeah. Third Age when the Zamrakians and the Zoroshans were warring. It all this time, you know. With these we tens don't know of any of that have survived. Yeah, um, but there were definitely Zoroshan vampires. Okay. Uh, did Saros lose any battles during the expansion campaigns? Cap and Lime. Um, so we know we know of at least one. We know yeah. that he lost to the Majorat. Yeah. That he tried to expand into. Well, he was at least struggling to win the battle. Mm. Well, yeah. There was certainly a lack of success. Yeah. The exciting version <laughs> of that story. Whether, whether anyone he was crushed, defeated. Whether he was defeated. As the well, man. he didn't kill any of the Mud Rats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Presumably, he didn't do very well. But, but I mean, as you said but before... As, um, it's it'd be a pretty boring war story if he never, one side never loses a battle at all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And also, you, a battle doesn't happen unless both sides think they have at least a chance of victory. Mm. Mm. So if he was winning every single battle, the battles would stop happening because the other side would just surrender. <laughs> I mean, I, there, there are probably some places that did just surrender, but, but yes. I mean, the people that he, were, he was battling against were established god empires mm. of gods that we know about that are still alive. So yes. obviously he never totally defeated Saradon. No, he never, no. he never yeah. defeated Armadale. We think, we think there were probably a lot more gods during the Second Age that we mm. don't know about. Some we of don't whom know, will have died. We don't know about them because yeah, several to people so yeah. comprehensively. Yeah. And we think that yeah. perhaps some of them may have gone over to the Empire, and perhaps there were even gods in the Empire that no one, no one really cares about because yeah. they, weren't the, they weren't the powerful gods. Mm. Yeah. Um, Zaros would have loved to have gods as followers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how did Nex come into Zaros' service? Empty Night One. That's a very present. So, so there is... Yeah. Can we say that there is content for this on the distant horizon? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We are we are going to be talking about this in content, so we can't talk about it now. Yeah, but we we but can say that. Excites. But next, next was never in someone else's service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is true. Uh, was there a romantic relationship between Char and Zaros? Taoshi, that is. What Sarah? I'm going to go with no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this, we, we this, this is relevant to your thing about Maybe. Ken. Yeah, <laughs> the Ken Barbie. Yeah, that's it. Um, Maybe it, she has some kind of feelings towards yeah. him, but I, I wouldn't have thought he would have... See, the way I see it is that very few people got them. an audience with Zaros. Yeah. And she was one of them. Um, even fewer, perhaps it, nobody, has seen Zaros beneath what he was wearing, whatever, yes. you know, see the true, yeah. if you wanted to call it that, Zaros form. I think that is what, how she kind of symbolised... Yeah, you know, maybe more of a fangirl. Yeah, she wanted to see her. I think <laughs> we, not, we, not quite Rolomeo. He enjoyed her company, would yeah. you say, yeah. because he did yes. spend time with her, and yeah. he yeah. wouldn't do that if it wasn't no. useful or pleasant for him. Trusted her, yeah, absolutely, I respected her power. But of course, we know from, we know from your story that 
And didn't he manipulate her into unleashing her power? Didn't he put her in a horrible situation? Yeah, but to, while to others force was, her powers to unlock, while others may have resented that, she saw that as an unlocking. Right. You know, yeah. you know, you know her truth. A lot of us would consider that a pretty horrible thing to do. Yeah. Her, but mm-hmm. <laughs> um, has Zaros ever been in possession of an elder artifact? That's from Dominator Forty Five. I've had a think. I mean, I can't think of a single one. No. no. I don't think no, he's no. ever needed them. No. Like the no. others. Which yeah. is quite interesting. Do. He started at the level of power that the other gods yeah. hoped yeah. to yeah. accomplish. Which is not to say he wasn't aware of them. Yeah. Um, but they, they, weren't, they weren't really useful for his goals. Yeah. They, he, he, I think he, if he wanted them, he would want them only in order to keep them safe away yeah. from other gods. Yeah. Not yeah. to use yeah. them himself. Yeah. Then there may have been some within his sort of cities and the areas he controlled, but I don't think he necessarily had them yeah. like the other gods have. Yeah. Perhaps that's something he's learned. Perhaps he's now thinking if I'd kept track of the stuff of Armadillo and yeah. kept it in a vault somewhere, yeah. this mm. whole thing wouldn't have happened. That seems very likely, yeah. yeah. Uh, will Asnadra still be the main general if Zaris comes back? That's from M. Ertz. So, go on, Asnadra fan. Or <laughs> 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 well, it's only be the, the lead Majora yeah. general. Yeah. He'd be the most talkative. He'd be yeah. the strategist, perhaps. Um, Zaris has already been talking to him for quite some time yeah. in the communion yeah. portal. But whether or not he's the main man for Zaros, I don't know. Or main, so or main lady. Main lady. Yeah. He would certainly. definitely be somebody that Zaros trusts. He's certainly still. in, yeah, in Zaros' yeah. trust still, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, his loyalty's never wavered. Never, been never shavered, yeah. yeah. Um, can we say that Azanadra wasn't a general in the Second Age? Could do. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't a general. He became, he became a military leader after the betrayal, uh, yes, yes. because many of the Zaroshan generals had turned to Zamorak, yeah. and the Zaroshans were light on military leaders, and so Azanadra took over as a military yes. leader. Yes, oh, I, I remember, yes, but his he, role was very different under yeah. Zaros. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't say originally that. a military leader, and so he emerged as, I remember as the dominant yeah. Zaroshan. Yeah, it's slightly later, I've completely forgotten that. Um, <laughs> why did Zaros ally with traditionally evil races? They were bound to betray him. That's a fantastic question from F.S. Well. Oh, you had a good answer to this, John. Who says they're traditionally evil? It could be the tradition that these races are evil is something that came later than Zavos being um, aligned with them. Yeah. I mean, he's also... I mean, we talked about this, but there's, he's got some affinity yeah. with it's, it's to the do with the, races. It's to do with the structure of the universe and the nature mm. of the worlds. Yeah. We know that Pandemonium is a very broken world. Yeah. So um, We know that Vampirium is a similarly broken world. Yeah. They're... they're, they're they're more similar to each other than the the worlds that the elves come to mm. come from, for example. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. All right, you made it through the w- roulette. Well done, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Okay, so um, now I've got to cheat a little bit. So revealing what's happening in the next fortnight, we have we have upcoming RuneFest. So I know that's not a podcast, but we are going to be having um, an hour long law session at RuneFest, which will be made available to all of you, communicated to all of you, um, which we're celebrating the RuneScape story. Um, going into a lot more depth, even though we're doing this podcast, revealing lots of things. You're going to find out about a couple of quests you may not know about. Um, so hopefully that will do, <laughs> because I'm, we're very busy at the moment organising Weavefest, as you can imagine. Um, we'll also, at that time, let you know what the next podcast will be. So that will be in four weeks' time. Okay, and to give you the Chaos Elemental hint, so this is a hint of future content in a kind of abstract, puzzly form. It's Dark Mom will be happy to hear that his slan are RuneScape's Carthaginian. So that is again, Dark Mom will be happy to hear that his slan are RuneScape's Carthaginian. So thank you very much and uh, hopefully have a podcast in four weeks time for you. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>